Inglewood Quarry, 200 kilometers southwest of Brisbane. Saturday is maintenance day. But unusually this Saturday, the plant was crushing. Among the people on site, site senior executive Michael Johnston and his willing helper, 10-year-old son, Brody. If I had maintenance to do on the weekends, he'd come out with me. Yeah, he was quite handy. If I needed to get something fixed, he'd grab the tools for me or any parts needed cleaning. Like most young boys, Brody relished the opportunity to help Dad. I'd get up in the morning and say, I've got to get the quarry and do a bit, bro. And um, he's straight to Mum. Mum, can I go? Can I go? I want to go with Dad. And, yeah, he loved it. That morning, Michael and Brody were working the loader. When a belt jammed, they left the loader running and went to fix the problem. We went around to get the rock out of the pulley and I was going to be there a while and the loader was still going up at the stockpile. So I said to Brody, just run up there, mate, and turn that loader off for me. Just go up and turn that loader off, Brody, please. He knew how to do it, I'd showed him in it before. So he went up and done that, and I was down at the bottom and trying to remove the rock from the tail pulley. Well, I went around the road and then went up to past the stockpile and then up the hill and turned the loader off. Like any quarry or small mining operation, Inglewood is a maze of potentially dangerous equipment. The quarry safety system relies on conveyor area protection to keep staff, contractors and visitors away from danger. But that day, Michael Johnston had left the area guarding open and his son made a fateful decision. When he came back, he decided to take a shortcut because I'd had that area guarding um, unlatched. He um, decided to go over the belt. Dad had the gate open and I went over the belt and then I come back down again and tried to jump over the belt and I got caught. I rode the belt up and got caught under a walkway and the belt was rubbing on my face. There was a metal rope going across from the power pole to the Simon Scusher. Uh, I should have grabbed onto it but it just went past too quick and then I was trying to push my head out with my hands. And all of a sudden I can hear this screaming noise. And I, I come back and I looked up, and sort of couldn't see anything out of unusual. And I heard it again, so I started going up the ladder and the next thing I seen Brody in the conveyor. So then I just shot across then, went straight up to the control room, switched the belt off and then had to go out and uh, drag him out from the head pulley of the conveyor. My face was lying on the belt and my arm and my arm was over the side of the belt and it was rubbing and cutting my arm and the, when my head was stuck it was rubbing on my face. The moving conveyor tore skin from Brody's face and body but it could have been far worse. It, it tore his actual ear off um, it was only hanging by uh, a few mil and uh, took away all the flesh of his cheek right down to his jawbone, down to uh, his chin and also friction burns to his left shoulder there and here inside his elbow. After a lengthy hospital stay, skin grafts and pressure bandages, Brody is recovering well. Yep. But his impulsive shortcut and the terrifying consequence highlight a regular issue for mine and quarry operators. They routinely host non-staff visitors on their sites. Contractors, customers, or friends or relatives of the quarry operators. The quarry operator and the site senior executive have a responsibility to ensure a quarry or mine is safe, and that means safe for visitors as well as employees. The operators uh, under the Act in Queensland have to make sure that they uh, provide a safe place to work for all employees and themselves. They have to make sure that the plant they provide uh, is, provides an acceptable level of risk. The, they, they also have to uh, appoint a site senior executive who's the most senior person on site to manage the site. 
that person, the site senior executive, has obligations as well. He needs to ensure that the risk from the plant that's operating at the quarry or mine or the substances used at those places doesn't pose an unacceptable level of risk to the workers or visitors or contractors or people who may come to the site. This means assessing risks to anyone on the site and then implementing measures to minimise the risk. Risk management is a very important tool for all persons on a mine or quarry site. Uh, it goes from the worker right to the very top, the site senior executive. Risk management is a technique, it's a, a way of doing things to ensure that you have adequate controls in place to control the hazards that may exist from the job that you're doing. At the time of the Inglewood accident, these fences provided conveyor area guarding as recommended by the Australian standard, except that the fence panel where Brodie crossed wasn't locked and there were no interlocking devices installed. Once he crossed the fence line, he was completely unprotected. On the day, uh, I should have isolated that belt I, um, because I was in a rush, getting around to the bottom conveyor to try and get the plant going again. I didn't isolate the belt and left the guard open, unlocked. That should have been followed, procedures should have been done. Uh, I was a bit lax. Um, I've also completed a course in risk ass assessments, risk management and uh, communication and incident investigation skills for if anything happens again. There are many dangers in a quarrying environment. Conveyors and crushing equipment need to be thoroughly guarded, with the dangers signposted. There should be highly visible, easily accessible emergency stop buttons for every piece of equipment. Quarries and mines must have induction procedures in place, and every visitor must receive the induction. The induction process is probably the most vital part of training for any person that enters a mine or quarry, because that's the first step in your exposure to the hazards that might exist at the mine or quarry. When visitors are on the site, it's best if they are under direct supervision at all times. This applies to all visitors, but particularly to children. Parents need to be aware that the hazards on any particular mine site or quarry, and they need to make sure that their children are either with them or in a safe place, either in the cabin of the truck if they're in a truck, or in the vehicle if they're in a car or, or other mode of transport. But they make, need to make sure that at all times they're supervised and they know where they are, so they're not wandering off into areas where it may be unsafe. With my own children, um, I just take them through and explain the dangers of the, of the conveyors and the crushers, um, to, what to stay away from, and always stay with the adult. Don't wander off. I'm always telling my boy in that, don't go away where I can't hear you. If you're yelling out, I've got to be able to hear you. And basically be in sight where I can see you around the area. Brody Johnston's adventurous and dangerous shortcut was easily preventable. The means to protect him were installed, but the safety system failed because a gate was left open. Effective safety in quarries and small mines involves a physical safety system and it requires operators to set and follow procedures to ensure that a brief lapse doesn't invite heightened risk onto the site.